Hello everyone, Jeff Spinks here from the University of Wollongong. This video shows how we make artificial muscles by twisting and coiling polymer fibres. These artificial muscles were first described in our 2014 publication in Science. By twisting ordinary polymer fibres like fishing line and sewing thread, we turn them into coiled structures like shown in figure 1b. When we heat these coils and they contract in length, and cooling allows them to expand again and in this way we can produce high performance artificial muscles. In this video we make electrically conductive polymer coils and that way we can heat the coils by passing an electrical current through the fibres. So here we show how we can make artificial muscles from monofilament nylon fishing line and we use commercially available silver coated nylon yarn as the electrically conductive part. The details of where we purchase the yarn is given at the end of the video. So we take equal lengths of both the fishing line and the silver coated nylon yarn and fix them to paper clips at both ends for mechanical connection while we do the twisting and coiling. The threads are attached to the paper clip just by tying them. The process is repeated at the other end. It's important to note that the twisting coiling reduces the length of the fibre to about one third of its starting length. So depending on how long you want to make your artificial muscles, you should start with precursor fibres about three times longer than what you require. So then we attach the fibres to an electric drill and hang a weight off the free end. This is about 10 megapascals of tensile stress. And we arrange the weight so that it cannot rotate. In this case we're leaning it against a, a board. We start the twisting it doesn't matter which direction we twist for monofilament fibres for yarns you should twist in the same direction as the inherent twist in the yarn. Now coiling will begin randomly but we have a little trick where we pinch the top of the fibres and lift the weight to reduce the tension in the top part of the fibres near the upper clip and that initiates coiling at the top part so we insert some twist and now we just pinch the fibre and lift it a little bit and this will start the coiling at the top of the fibre. Once coil is initiated we find that coils then add to that point. If we have multiple nucleation sites then that leads to defects in the, in the artificial muscle. So twisting continues until the sample is fully coiled and it's removed from the drill, we have to hold the ends to stop it untwisting. Then we attach it to a frame and apply a small amount of stretch, about 10% of the coiled length. And then we do a two stage heat treatment process to fix the coil structure. The sample is placed in an oven at 180 degrees Celsius for one hour. while the ends are clamped and there's a small stretch applied. After one hour the sample is removed and cooled to room temperature. And then a further stretch is applied, this time about 33% of the ready stretched length. And again clamped. The reason for this stretching is to open up gaps between the turns in the coil. This allows room for contraction when we operate the sample as an artificial muscle. So the second stage of heat treatment again involves heating at 180 degrees for one hour. Cooling to room temperature and now the coiled and stretched structure is fixed. 
we do find there is some relaxation, so we'd normally leave the sample for at least 24 hours at room temperature before we do any testing. And now we show how we make electrical connections. We use fine uncoated copper wire that's wrapped around the end of, of the sample. And for reliable electrical connection we use a small amount of silver paste. To complete the electrical connection and, and also provide mechanical connection we use crimps. These are available from craft stores. This particular crimp has a, a hole that allows us conveniently to make mechanical connections to the sample. Then the sample is cut to the desired length and the process is repeated at the other end. And here is the final sample with its electrical connections ready for testing. We purchased the silver coated nylon from V Technical Textiles and the information is shown on the screen. So that's how we make our artificial muscles. I'd like to thank Dashio Kongahagi for showing us how the process works and Sam Finlay for video. More information can be found at our Bionic Muscles YouTube channel where we have videos showing the testing procedures and other types of artificial muscles. And if you have any commercial interests in these twisted coiled artificial muscles, please contact Professor Ray Bachman at the University of Texas at Dallas. Thanks for watching.